You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Downton Abbey After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Downton Abbey After Show. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bing is for doing it. We are here doing another AfterBuzz TV After Show for Downton Abbey Season 3, Episode 1, the premiere episode. And I'm your host, John Comer Ford. I'm joined in the studio by the very lovely and talented Tamara Berg. Hello. And helming in the booth for us is Stephen Lemieux. Stephen, say hi to everybody for us. Thank you. Hey, Isn't everybody. How are we doing tonight? Okay, good. Thanks. First Go time ahead. Downton Abbey for After Buzz. Oh, for After Buzz, that's right. We talked about doing sec season two, right. and because you and I have been watching since season since one, yes, as, as uh, a lot of the fans are, we've been thinking about coming in and doing this, and we've finally been able to, yeah, to make it happen. It. Yes. And here we are very excited to be doing uh, Finally, yeah, to be part of this uh, huge worldwide phenomenon uh, known as Downton Abbey, because at this point, uh, at least at last writing that I've read anyway, yeah. uh, is uh, what, 35, it's in 35 five countries. It's the most watched television program around the world. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's in more countries now. Right. Uh, and of course in, in America here we're, uh, what, I don't know, six months behind England because they've already seen season three and um, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Season three began in September in Okay, England. so, all right, so we're behind them. So, uh, for those of you in the international community who are listening, who are ahead of us, sorry about that. <laughs> we're just catching up to you. It's uh, not our fault. That's right. We just got it. What can we do? What can we do? Huge, huge for uh, 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 public broadcasting uh, to have the Masterpiece Theater. Well, let's see, what, what was it? So, it, it received a, a rating of, what, eight million viewers? Eight million viewers on Sunday's episode. Which is huge mm -hmm. for people. Uh, PBS huge and, and, and up uh, from their previous premieres by what, what I think 96 percent wow. or something like so, that and, the there premiere. you go and only growing so obviously if you're listening to this you've already you're initiated into this so that this is nothing new to you the phenomenon this is that this is but well, and also we didn't talk about awards so oh, uh, you know countless. Emmys and, oh, and Golden Globes, Golden Globes and yeah and who knows what they want in other countries I don't even have that uh, right they have done that kind of research on it but anyway it's a fabulous show where we enjoy it immensely and it's we're rabid fans like everybody out there we talk to anybody that sees it, you know, I, I, I can't I'll just tell you real quickly because Tamara, when she saw it, uh, was it last year, I guess, when you were first came into it? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I was sick. I was sick in bed over go. a holiday and, and was really, uh, it was a perfect opportunity to be sick because there was a Downton Abbey marathon going on. Exactly. And so I caught it in the middle, right around the whole Turkish ambassador incident. Oh, there you go. And Pamuk. hooked me right away. Yeah. I was sitting there, you know, snotty, you know, weeping, watch for two reasons, watching the yes. show. And um, kept telling everybody I know, oh my gosh, you must yes, watch this Downton yeah. thing, you must watch this Downton thing. And, and they were like, whatever. Yeah, it's the last thing I'm I wanted to get into. I'm a into. huge fan yeah. of, you know, English. You are an Anglophile. Ingl I am an Anglophile. I, you know, we can just keep right. talking and about so that. When you told me to watch it, I, I said, okay, that's because she's an Anglo Fox. She's, she's going to be fascinated yeah, by it. She loves she, the history of it. She just likes that stuff. Period pieces she loves. I'm not going to yeah. be interested in it. Yeah. I don't really want to watch it. But then yeah. I did, and it's like, Okay. Then I, then I made you. Yeah, you did. And, I've, okay, and I so, do that to all right, everybody. That's enough. So, we got to yeah. get into this. So much okay. to cover, so okay. little time to do it. I mean, uh, downstairs, of course, we've got Anna Bates and the whole jail and all that kind of stuff happening, and uh, Thomas and O'Brien against each other. We've free Bates! Ex free Bates! <laughs> free Bates, exactly. Uh, and we'll talk about the, the, the Twitter you got from that. Yeah. Uh, and then what else is going on? Oh, Edith finally has a suitor, so to speak. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into that. And then, of course, Mary and uh, Matthew, Matthew Wed finally. But the big news is the whole thing that's happening is that Downton is, is in, in trouble. trouble. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Yes. Okay. So Lord Grantham, uh, as astute as he is in the ways of the world of money, uh, makes a horrible investment. He puts all his money into railroads. Canadian railroads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as they, what was it that they were saying at the, not in the show, but in, in an interview, they were saying at that time, you know, if you had money, it just made money. Right. So you didn't have to worry about it. But no. 
No, it doesn't work this way, and so they are destitute. Cora's fortune is uh, pretty much wiped out, yep. uh, so they're going to lose Downton. Well, they have the house yeah. because it's just been, you know, passed through generations, but it costs, right. you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. to run those houses, and this this happens to families a lot yeah. in, and in the did, UK. Exactly, and it did, especially at this time. Mm -hmm. So they're going to, they're in trouble, they're in desperate, they, they might lose Downton, which means uh, their position, all that kind of stuff. Of course, Cora doesn't think it's that big a deal. She's just, hey, let's just go to a smaller house. Have gun, will travel. I'm an American. <laughs> yeah. Will adapt. Yeah, she's a, that's okay. So, to her, oh, but I just love the way it sets up the whole season. Well, I don't know if it's going to be the whole season, but you know they're going to be dealing with this. And this is just another example of how Downton, uh, well, uh, the, the era, they're, they're struggling, the, the conflict of pulling the Edwardian age into a modern time. So yes. that's what the, the, you know, indicative of that, uh, as we'll see. And, you know, uh, uh, Obviously, Martha uh, Le Levinson is Levinson, the, right? Is, is, Played is, by Shirley yeah, MacLaine. So she, as the American, she also is the one that's pulling, trying to get them to come into the modern age. She's, Branson yeah, she, is another bridge to that, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, there's so shake, there's shakeups coming out, mm -hmm. coming this way. So, but I love that that setup happens. Just like you know, we had the, the Titanic uh, and the, and as, who's as, the heir set up the first season, and mm -hmm. then you got the war. That's the second. So now this is the big deal that that Downton may be in trouble, and that sets the stage for the rest of it. And because uh, immediately, so Downton's in trouble. We've lost all this money. What happens? Matthew gets an inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he doesn't get it right away because there are two people who might get it before him, and then there's all that struggle and conflict between he and Mary about, what? well, what if you get it? Why doesn't that happen in real life when yeah, the I know. money's pulled away here? Exactly. It suddenly just shows up you know, somewhere else. But there, Matthew has a big conflict over this yeah. because it's a moral issue for him. He's, he's uh, third in line to Reggie Swire's yeah, Lavinia's uh, father. Lavinia's father, Will, and uh, Reggie Swire's Will. And so he, you know, he, as far as he's concerned, Matthew broke Lavinia's heart. He killed her. I know. Okay, let's talk this a little bit because yeah. I find this the part, the part fascinating because he makes the argument and stuff. And I, I, I get, you know, the argument, but I go, it just didn't really seem like a strong argument to me. I mean, I understand it. I get it that he feels like he broke her heart and he feels guilty over the fact that he, in his words, he, 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 I get what I, he crushed her will to live, and yes. that's why she died because yes. you know he didn't honor her because obviously she caught Lavinia caught he and Mary dancing and kissing, and that uh, she realized at that point that uh, uh, Matthew's not hers. Mm -hmm. So that and that's the reason why she no longer chose to, well had the will to live. So he can't take the money that uh, Lavinia's father would give him because he feels guilty. About it. So you don't think that's a strong argument? No, it is. It's just that at some point, I mean, you know, uh, you know, he's hoping that, okay, he'll get it first. Oh, no, that didn't happen. Oh, this guy, he's an Indian. Oh, they found him. He's dead, too, so I get it. But, I mean, you have your wife now, the woman that you love. Their family could be destitute. And, and you, you could have save a perfect them. Perfect opportunity to save them. Yeah, right? and so you know, okay, so I can understand it on one hand, but the other hand, I'm going, yeah, but you could save all this. You could save the county for crying out loud. Here's the other thing: it's not like he's taking the money away from someone else. Yes, that's the other point I'm trying to make. What that, we don't know who's fourth in line, right. but it's but he's legitimately, you know, gotten to this point just by by succession. Right. And so. I, I, you know, I, I sort of tend to agree with you, but I can I can see the moral dilemma. For oh, sure. Him. And they have to have one. And it's a whole thing about duty and honor. And I get that part's great. I love it. it it's just, you know, I was like, if I were Mary, I'd be going, what are you crazy? You know, which was exactly what she was doing, yes. you know, and I loved how they played that out. And just in little snippets, you only got to hear, you know, the argument kept progressing mm -hmm. instead of, you know, beating it the whole time. But that was great. And, you know, it leads to a big, huge thing. They might not get married because of it. Right. So, right. You know, and we, since we since we are there, we might, let's just just jump right into that. Oh, but we, we wait before we do that. We should talk about this because this is the the marriage also uh, brings this to bear, because Matthew's not necessarily willing to save Downton with his new inheritance should he receive it. Right. They have to look at their other sources of income to help do it. Right. And who's coming to town because of the wedding? Grandma. <laughs> Grandma Ma, I think is what Grandma they call Ma. Yeah, Shirley MacLaine, of course. So she makes her huge debut here. Great to have her in the cast. What a wonderful foil and uh, uh, opposite to uh, Maggie. Well, she's she's such a great example of yeah. an American of the time. And you don't have any problem believing no. that we're still in 1920. Yeah. And that and that she's the American in in London or you know in England. She's she's you know I loved how the first encounter between. Um, her and the dowager, right, Countess. They they come together, and Martha is that her name? Martha. Martha Levinson. Martha Levinson comes up and just okay. starts <laughs> hugging on Maggie Smith, just <laughs> hugging on her. Come on, lady, and come on over. Maggie I, Smith is literally standing there like this, with her, oh! not, not knowing what to do with her hands. It's like, oh, what and is sort this of, thing? Yeah. 
Yeah. You can't get it's a great visual because you you know the, the formality and the tradition of uh, of the dowager. Yes. How could anybody be touching her? Why would they be touching her? Good heavens. <laughs> But even before that, when Shirley, uh, Shirley, I keep calling her Shirley, Martha, Martha, excuse me, Martha, Martha Levinson, Levinson, when she appears, I like when she drives up to Downton, you know, there, you know, where's the, you know, where'd you get this car? I, you know, and, you know, oh, before that, she says, where, uh, and am I going to get a kiss from you? Oh, from her son-in-law. From her son-in-law, mm -hmm. yes, with the greatest of enthusiasm. <laughs> with the greatest of enthusiasm. <laughs> and then, of course, she's, you know, every person, you know, all the daughters that she talks, excuse me, her granddaughters, they, they all, she all says something not, uh, not so nice to say. Uh, right. Tell me about your plans and I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do to remedy them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Of course, either still no one, well, <laughs> still no one. Still, <laughs> poor, poor Edith. Edith. <laughs> yeah. Poor and doesn't, by the way, it doesn't say a word to Matthew when she shows up there. He's right out there, you know, welcome here as well. But he just, she just walks right by him. Right. It's not until they're in the drawing room or whatever when they finally talk. And she, the first thing she wants well, to know, I how love, are you related? I love how are you related? And I love the comment between the two matriarchs later, where yeah. she says, "So what do we think about this young man yeah. who's taking both of our husbands' money? Right. Yeah. Do we like him?" And and Dowager, the Dowager, what the heck are we calling her these days? Well, the, Violet. Uh, yeah, Violet, yeah. so it's a little... Just call little, her the Dowager. It's a little informal for me yes, to be calling her yeah. Violet. Call her the Says, Dowager. I, I like him not as much as you are going, you to. Are going to. And remember, she did not like him. Which, no, yeah. which is really a ringing endorsement. Yeah. But, I, but, but even before that, when they were meeting him in the drawing room and then she turns to oh, Matthew, and, then, yes. and uh, Martha Levinson says, you know, so how, how are you are related, related again? And, and why is it that you should take our money? Yes. Because <laughs> she finds this whole tradition crazy. Yeah. As one would. Right. Well, an American would. Yeah, well, anyway. that's true. That's true. But anyway. And so that continues every, to come up. Right. Yeah. So that sets the stage because Sybil and Branson get to come back. And, well, and, yeah. and so we're thinking maybe that Martha's here to help, right? That's what Mary's thinking anyway. Well, or, or they want, to, they're doing everything can, they can to court her to help, to show her why it's so important to save Downton. And, that, you know, the only source of money they can see is her because she's got money, uh, the money bags because of her husband and what he left and stuff. So they want more. Than, it saved him one time, the first time, so maybe it'll save him again. So that's what they're hoping. Right, right. So I just love the way they go behind you know their little yeah. machinations about yeah. oh let's take her to tea that she you know that you know she, let's ha let her have her way here so we can get her to do that there she can see how you know. and she 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 must see what it is she's supporting yeah. so let's <laughs> yes. how let's show her it is. how yes. fabulous everything can be yeah and of course it's kind of in her mind because um, Martha when they were talking to Martha about uh, when, when I'm sorry when uh, Isabel, Isabel Isabel was talking about her yeah. her new her new role her new uh, Occupation, occupation by helping yes. uh, women who have Way, gone a wayward wayward ladies exactly mm -hmm. uh and when they tell her the whole story uh the first thing that she says is you want me to donate to this how, so how much would you like and she much. goes well, and and Cora says to her mother well you don't that's not you don't have to donate money to everything we talk about and she's like, oh right, isn't, so, isn't that what you expect of the rich american ladies right so she's setting up that that, that is what she yeah, does she clearly knows mm -hmm. and in fact even her uh maid assistant or mm -hmm. lady in waiting so to speak i'm not exactly sure what her term is mm -hmm. uh has says that she can read all of you like a like a book like, like, a, book. like a deck of cards like, hand, like yeah. a i don't know like the back of your hand mm -hmm. what else do you read <laughs> hey i was drinking water when you said <laughs> sorry i almost yeah. made you spit take all right so that would have so been good that's what's happening and of course and that what that's and oh and let's talk briefly about how the fact that sybil and branson get to come back oh okay and there's a big huge like who paid i mean somebody had somebody had to, and i thought well how strange that they had to give them money to come back but i guess they didn't because you know they've been there's no more money that's what lord grantham had told yeah, and they're coming all the way from ireland yeah so somebody had to fork up some bills to get them to come back for the wedding just real quickly i i want to touch on the fact that the reason why downton is in trouble is directly because yes. of earl grantham right it's his and bad so, investment exactly and and to watch him with the weight of the world oh, and the yeah. weight of this massive house and the the county and, and the, on his shoulders yeah. to see him break up mm -hmm. and you in know front of Cora. and I don't know if he actually cried but nearly cried well, it looked like was it did, yeah. really kind of heartbreaking yeah. especially especially after the way when he was in the lawyer's office and he found out that really is no more money and he says I will not be the one that uh, drops that the, brings down drops this. the torch and, mm -hmm. and I will not you know his his resolve there was so strong to, to and imagine the, the kind of weight of that is yeah because I, mean, you, you, I mean I don't know how old this quote old this family is but obviously it's been centuries mm -hmm. and you know uh, and, and to feel that you're the one that's going to be the last in line i, I mean imagine i can't even imagine the pressure of that kind of thing 
Not to, at all. to hold that. Oh, wow. And, and the responsibility of that. And then the, you, you feel it. And of course, he's so preoccupied. Every, every time he comes home, he, he's more, you know, how much is this wedding going to cost? No, we can't do anything on the cheap because all he can think about is now how everything is costing money. Yes. Whereas before, I'm sure he didn't even have to care about that. No, probably never mm-hmm. asked. Yeah, that's right. Even when, when he sees Mary in her going away outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus, how, how does it look? Cost me? How does that cost me? <laughs> how do I look? Yeah, exactly. How does it look? Yeah. Expensive. Expensive, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's all he's concerned but about. But he does have a wedding to look forward he to. He does have a wedding, but it's not on the cheap, that's for sure. Because Matthew and Mary are getting they married. They did, which picks up from last season because they finally got engaged yes. at the end of last season. So we got to see the, oh, I mean, and, and so let's talk about the, uh, uh, do we want to talk about the wedding right now? Or do yeah. We, okay, because it happens, well, you know, at the end, well, midpoint, I guess, is when yeah. it happened this particular yeah. episode. So what did you think? Of, okay, do you want me to critique just like the wedding? Just the wedding, and then okay. we'll get into it. Or do you want to? Awesome. Yeah. No, I want to talk. <laughs> okay, good. I want to talk dress. Okay. I want to talk veil. I want right. to talk jewels. Well, just perfectly appropriate. Yeah. It's one of the things I love about this show is mm. is everything that they do is really outstanding. You because yeah. I look, you know, yeah. and I we I've watched this episode now three times or four times. I don't know. Um, uh. Because you know it started on Sunday, and we've and and I've, I I need to watch them more than once before we okay. do an after buzz, so that I so I can really be up on it. And I look at things, and and also over the break, uh, I watched some of season one and season sure. two just to kind yeah. of catch up. And so you know, looking at all the details is really kind of exciting for me to see all of that. Mm-hmm. I. Uh, um, watched this episode with my sister and we saw first saw Mary in her gown Mm -hmm. with a robe over it with that peach colored robe over it and this may really be boring some of the men but I just want to talk about it anyway sorry you're gonna have to go through this for a minute or two with me um the this peach robe and she's standing there and has this beautiful corona or crown or something tiara in her head hair and and my sister turns to me and goes what is that her wedding dress (laughs) And I go, no, it can't be because her wedding dress is going to be fabulous and certainly not peach. Yeah. So then Anna takes off the the gown and or the dressing gown and she's wearing this beautiful dress. Just beautiful, she, appropriate. She does that great entry down the mm-hmm. stairs. I mean, nice. Whoever chose to have their have her come down the stairs well, to reveal course. her coming it's, down the stairs. That's you know, it's In sort the of the classic. Hall. Exactly, it's Absolutely. the classic bride yeah, thing. but the if fact that they a, did it. Yeah. If you've got a grand house, you're gonna put you the bride it. coming down the. Absolutely. Now my fear would be I'd be the bride who falls down the stairs. I right. would be. But it, it would have been interesting though because you could have had her first time reveal that. As she's coming down the aisle, yeah, with and and when Matthew gets to see her, because they made a big point about don't see me before the wedding, you know, can't bad luck, all this other stuff. I thought they're going to reveal it at the church when she's coming down the aisle because. Do, do you know the name of the show? It's Downton Abbey. Yeah, I know, I know. Show but but, but what, what I liked is instead of doing that, which could have been, you know, that would have worked great because it, that's what it felt like they were setting up. Don't see her before the. They kept. How many times did they say you can't see me before the wedding? Oh, they yeah. made a big deal about that. So I thought, oh, they'll finally reveal her when she comes down the aisle. Of mm-hmm. course, mm-hmm. with you know, uh, with Lord Grantham walking her down. But no, they didn't. They walk. They come down to the uh, stairway, the stairway. Uh, Downton Abbey, which is of course great. But better than that, they had the two fathers yes. looking at her. Yes. So they had Lord Grantham, her actual father, and of course Carson who's kind of a surrogate know, father, surrogate father. Mm-hmm. they both side by side see her coming down those stairs and the look on the great acting and the great look uh, everything on the you know what they were what gobsmacked <laughs> they were gobsmacked they were gobsmacked, were gobsmacked. trademark that please <laughs> yes <laughs> But oh, it's an English term. It's an English term, yeah. so we can't trademark. I can't. So, but it was but wonderful. But I use it every chance I get. Yes. So it was so beautiful to yeah. see them and their, fa- you know, just their sort of thunderstruck faces yeah. with the beauty of her, the gravity of what's happening, yeah. knowing that this was a great union that was going to be happening. It's, yeah, something they've happy, been wanting. They've been wanting. It was just like it all came together, and you could just read it on their faces. Yeah. And a beautiful, And, of course, Lord Grantham, portrayal. you know, happy, and he says, of course, I, I'm so happy with my heart's beating out of my chest and stuff. And so, and I you feel really, yeah. as though my heart, my chest is going to burst. So, okay, there you go. That's so, what he and said. So, and, and it was a great moment because um, the, the whole, it, for, especially for him, for Lord Grantham, because of all the stress he's under and all this pressure mm-hmm. and the fact that, the, you know, there is finally something to be happy about. Yes. Because all he can see right now is everything going down the crapper. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but no, this at least is something good. Nothing like a wedding to bring yeah, it out. The actual exactly. quote, I'm sorry, was, I'm so very happy. I feel my chest will explode. There you go. So, yeah. You know, that's... But of course, 
That's okay. what any bride wants right. to bring and out. And at the dad. wedding, you know, I thought, well, I thought there'd be a bigger splendor, but I don't know what it was like back then. Maybe that's just how they did it. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't a huge thing. I had the, they had the nice pennants around. I thought that was great going through the town, though, riding the carriage and the white pennant flags are everywhere around the, the town. And the p townspeople with the yeah, flags. Yeah, everyone going crazy. Which I assume was the Grantham Crest Probably, flag or yeah. something like that. It was a really beautiful tableau for the for the film. Yeah, it was the great. Show and. Um, and but yeah. of course, it was it was almost not to be, yes, because it was. because she was Mary was so upset that that Matthew wouldn't just step forward and say, "Hey, I'll take the inheritance and I'll save down." Right, because before the wedding, yeah, before the wedding, she told him, "Yeah, we're, we're broke." Lord, yeah, Lord Grantham said, "Look, I have to tell them now because yeah. they'll need to discuss it on their honeymoon, so that they'll know mm -hmm. what to do." So yeah, she, he told her. At least he, uh, Lord Grantham told, told Mary. Mary, yes, of and course. So and then she, when she found out, she obviously, she obviously told. Uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew, but, you know, he wasn't about to do it. But who saves the day with that? Branson. Branson, the former chauffeur. Former chauffeur. Yeah. Really interesting choice yeah. and a little, a bit of a surprise because yeah. he's the guy who's all for modernity. He's kind of the, the stand for we're upsetting the status yeah, quo. Yeah, how many times he I want to put a bomb under the light or something like That's that. Exactly that. That's exactly the, the conversation he, he was having yeah. with Matthew. That's what he said. Yeah. I want to put a stick of dynamite under but, the light of you. But I, it was interesting because, you know, you, we had... Uh, discussed this, and at some point, I think you had said that it, it almost felt like he had sacrificed uh, a little bit of his beliefs there. Of by, his principles, Of his yeah. principles, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well, actually, no, I think about what he put above that was the love that he knew that Matthew had for um, Mary. Right, kind of looking at the bigger purpose, the bigger picture yeah. even then. And his one line, which I thought was a good, nice line, which uh, 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 Matthew repeats, was that, look, you'll, you'll never be happy uh, knowing... As it, long as she, as walks, long as the she earth. walks the earth. So... And, that, and that's what did it. That's what he, that's what swings it for both of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just I thought it was really great that Branson um, was w because he's been so political up to this yeah. point from every time, every minute. And we've especially seen in him. this episode. <laughs> well, there's <laughs> that. On and on the and whole, on. Yeah, the whole dinner. And, and of course, incident. Larry Spike and his drink. Right. Going. Oh my God. And before, in, in seasons before, where yeah. he was going to the rallies and all yeah. of that kind of stuff. So the fact that he was able to to really see To make further, this union happen, yeah. When he doesn't... And, and yeah. you know, we're mad enough to uh, take on the Crowley girls. We have to stick together. together. Wasn't that great, though? I love the way that they had, they had worked that whole storyline out because Branson clearly did not want to... He, he was only he was doing it out of an obligation for Sybil. Look, okay, Mary's going to get married, so I'm going to go back because you're my wife, et cetera, right? et cetera. He didn't want to be there, didn't want to wear the... Outfits, wore his own clothes, all that kind of stuff. So he was against this to to a large degree, and and, and so much so they felt so uncomfortable that he wanted to stay at a hotel or whatever. The pub. He wanted to stay at the pub. Yeah, above the pub or whatever it is. And and Matthew's the one that convinces him, no, no. I you know, look, if we're gonna get crazy enough, as you said, uh, to, to marry, take on the to crawling take on the, girls, we gotta stick together. Which mm -hmm. I thought was a great little, you know, because he, he he and Branson even pointed to the fact that Matthew is an outsider as well to right. this family, right. even though they're related in some very Distant way. Distant way. He he was an outsider. Yeah, he so. was a he was a lawyer in town. He yeah, was, and he doesn't really share their values about the history and tradition of it. In yeah, because, because he didn't grow up with that. Yeah, and and he wants to live a simpler life. He doesn't need all these uh, you know servants and all that other stuff. So he's looking forward to get, getting to know his his wife, his <laughs> bride. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so mm -hmm. ridiculous to us modern folks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who you know, people know each other for a long time before they get married yeah. and get nope. get very Not, acquainted yeah, with I each other. That was the strangest thing that he said. But they, you know, again, that's the time mm -hmm. they didn't really know each other mm -hmm. uh, because obviously there are certain things he didn't know uh, of her. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I want to talk about that. We talked about this just a little bit before What's we went that? on. Well. Okay, so he there was a little bit of racy talk between oh, yes. Mary and Matthew yeah, yeah. for the time. Extremely, well, it ex seemed like yes, absolutely. So. She talks about about uh, him taking her upstairs naked. Yeah, he says yeah. I, well, I mean, she asks uh, or tells him that, that we can stay here after we're married and right. stuff, and he says he felt uncomfortable, uh, you know, taking you up to bed with your father watching. And she says he's so happy that I'm that we're getting married. I don't think he he mind if you carry me up to the naked. Thank you. Yes, exactly. And so he she suggests to carry you up the naked. And he goes, Hey, don't give me any ideas or whatever it is. I go, Oh, very. So here's the thing. And, but the other one was even okay. better. What was the other line he said? Um, Are you talking about when they come home from the honeymoon? No, no. no the okay. other line. Uh, what was it? Oh my God! What was that other line about? Oh, she he says uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of oh, things. Oh, right. That was it. He, they were talking about something, and he says, "Well, I'm looking forward to a lot of things, meaning you know, the wedding night, etc." Yeah. And she says, "Don't make me blush." <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then the other Reese 
talked yeah. with Cora saying, is there anything you'd like me to tell you? Would yes. you like me to explain some things yeah. to you? Birds yeah. and the bees and all that? Or, or, or when Mary says, you don't have to chaperone us anymore. After tomorrow, all things are, uh, everything's on the table, whatever it is. Cora, right. don't, don't embarrass me. <laughs> So that's but, that's the racy talk for the Edwardian age. You know, age. let's talk about the fact that we know Mary had a man in her bed. Yes, at who one died. Point. Yeah. So so okay. So Mary, not a virgin. No. Okay. okay. So. But <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, 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 she's getting to a point here, Steve. I am. Um, so is Matthew? Well, I would not. I would expect not. I would expect not too. But these are not the kind of guys who are going to go, you know, first of all, their contemporaries yeah. are are like Mary, yeah. who are expected to be pure sure. when they get married. So sure. his the, the the ladies he, you know, went to school with <laughs> and and his and, eligible eligibility and the cotillions or whatever <laughs> yeah. the equivalent of a cotillion is in, <laughs> in England. Yeah. Those ladies are not going to, you know, be amorous with him before their wedding night. Clearly not. So, is Matthew a virgin? Probably, I, not. probably not. How how does that happen? He's also not the kind uh, of guy the, who's going to go to a hooker. Uh, well, I mean, a gentleman lady, never lady tells. Of the evening. A gentleman never tells. So. Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> so 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 how does Matthew get it on before here? <laughs> That's what I want to know. I really do. All right, for every, everybody who's still listening, <laughs> maybe we can do some research on that. You'll let us know. Uh, you'll comment on that and uh, maybe uh, tweet that to Tamara Burke. At, at Tamara Berg on right. Twitter. I want to well, know. Since we just mentioned that, for those of you who are telling us or, or, or tuning into iTunes and, and downloading and uh, uh, rating and commenting, we want to thank you for that because that's the thing that keeps us going here. We have over 3 million downloads a week because of you and your interest, and we appreciate all your comments. If you can continue to do that, tell a friend so we can keep building our community. As we say here at, uh, at uh, AfterBuzz, we like to start the conversation about the shows. We hope that you continue them and, and, and either in tweet form or uh, leaving comments and ratings and things like that because we we do read those, and it does help us here, so we thank you for that. Uh, so keep that going. Uh, now, And let me know if you know how Matthew yeah, yeah, lost well, his virginity. Right, yeah, please, that's a very important, <laughs> very important aspect that Tammy really wants to know. So we'll get into that another time. I, I'm sure there are, I'm sure there have, yeah, let's check Wikipedia, maybe that has something there. <laughs> All right. All right where, Julian where Fellows said every one of the the characters has a very rich uh, backstory. And you know, maybe, sure. maybe that's part of Matthew's backstory. Well, I know, I but, but I think that's fascinating. I don't know how, I don't think Julian's ever going to deal with that part of it. I but don't it think he is either. It's just, it, you know. Mm -hmm. We can move on. I just thought it was. But the weirdest funny. thing about the whole thing, when they were all that, you know, quote, racy talk for the Edwardian age. Oh, my gosh. Yes. When, when they have, the, they, they come back from their honeymoon. It was the first thing that Grantham, Lord Grantham asks of his new son-in-law. Okay, they are literally coming out yes, of the car. First thing. First thing out front, outside. Well, he, he asked a rather, you know, innocuous, you know, how was your honeymoon? And, and, and he says, says, my eyes are open. <laughs> and I said, what? What are you talking about? And Why then you... Lord Grantham says something to the effect of, I'm sure they were. I know what you mean. I, think I know what you said, mean. Yes, I, know I know what, what you, mean. you mean. And I was like, what? Are, that's your father. Why are you even discussing? I mean, and I'm going, did I miss something? Is there some sort of a different subtext that that could mean? I have a uh, theory how he might have lost his virginity. You oh, do? boy. Here do we go. Tell. I do. Okay, go oh, ahead. I'm just going to throw it up on the screen. Okay. Oh, geez. Oh, goodness. Oh, boy. I'm not sure I like this. No. No. That is not what I'm talking about. Okay. Couldn't resist, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, feel free. Go right ahead. <laughs> let's. Can we move on to the matriarchs? Yes, let's do so. Let's talk about the the two yes, grandmothers. Do. All right. Yeah, because this is huge to have uh, Shirley MacLaine come in and play Martha Levinson. Everybody was really anticipating this because. I mean, what? Who better to go up against? Well, again, Maggie Smith. You know what I mean? But, but going yeah. up Maggie Smith. But what a, right, what a wonderful. Oh yeah, these two pillars. Elevated. Of, uh, I mean, my God, the resumes are amazing. The CVs long and varied, and uh, and I was really anticipating this being a lot of fun, and it turned. It really is. It's a heck of a lot of fun to see them too. The the lines between the two of them. Yeah. Were just. I have to say hilarious. though, they really gave Maggie the better lines. I mean, yeah, she, they did. There's a whole list of these lines, of course, but that, they've already set up the characters, so they, they had to follow through on those things. But uh, sh certainly, they gave Shirley some wonderful stuff too. What I mean, uh, uh, I'm afraid the war has made two old women of us. <laughs> two. Well. I do stay out of the sun. Yeah, exactly. So, and I, one of the and uh, the the other thing was that I was great that Shirley, in a weird way. Was playing at the conscience of them, you know, to 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 move into the modern. Yeah. Well, I mean, she says, uh, what was it? 
history and tradition brought Europe into a world war, so yes. maybe we shouldn't follow it. Things like that, things like that to really crystallize. She was great, and you know, in fact, the Dowager's response to that is that she's a homing pigeon. She knows our underbelly. She can, she can get to our underbelly every time. Yes. And that's what she was. She would cut through all the tradition, all the pomp and the circumstance, and go, yeah, well, that's ridiculous. Well, and reading them like a book. Yeah. Like we talked about yeah. before. Which really I seeing through yeah. the all of the the layers of propriety that yeah. the English put up mm -hmm. of this is what you should be paying attention, but this is what's really going on. <laughs> yeah, the upstairs and the downstairs. It is. It's exactly. the upstairs yeah. and the downstairs. Yeah. So yeah. And great. But let's uh, we gotta say a few of the lines just because there's so much fun. The Dowager, what the, see if we can remember some of them. Uh, are you looking or am I looking? Um Nothing succeeds like excess. Uh, you know, of course that's you know her one of her great lines. Yeah, the Dowager lines. Do you remember them? Oh, when I what, oh what, what she says about uh, Martha Levinson when I'm with her, I'm I'm reminded of the virtues of the English. And Matthew says, "Well, isn't she American?" <laughs> and she says, "Exactly." exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's just great stuff. And you 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 expect to have one of those great lines coming out of her every time she says something. Yes. But and they had quite a few. I mean, I was not disappointed. No. Or did they uh, asked her if she wanted a new, one of the new fancy cocktails, and she says, "No, no, no, I don't think so. They look so too far too exciting for for, for what was it for so early for, in so the, early in the evening. evening. I just blew the line. She didn't, so it was fabulous, but I blew it. <laughs> well, I, I like the the whole conversation of, for God's sake, how long is she going to be here? <laughs> What, who's coming to dinner next week? Yeah. Next week. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Really? Next yeah. week? And, you know, it was great that the way that Shirley, um, as Martha, was, um, you know, the whole, just just her manner. And, uh, you know, they, they're they all sitting around the table. Everybody is prim and proper. They're, they're not even eating. Their hands, I think, are in their lap. It's only Martha Levinson who's eating. And she's eating uh, while everybody's discussing something. And she's eating while she's talking at the same time which i just it looked it seemed so rude absolutely in the presence no, no. of the exactly they're so rude in their presence and i go well yeah there you go there's there's, there's the, the uncouth american right so it's it, she really it's the representation of the yeah. old versus the new yeah. the english versus the american yeah. the tradition versus the modern yeah. And, and she's just so on the side of, well, you know, why keep all this up anyway? You know, you know, who needs this? Right. This Downton Abbey thing. Just go to a smaller house. And I'm thinking, yeah, the house, the smaller house that she lives in, it, you know, what, what, you know, what would that be? Well, her Newport house yeah, exactly. or her New York <laughs> exactly. house? Exactly. That's my point. For us, that those are castles. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but just a great matchup between the two, though. Watching them. Yeah. Um, and and again, you know, beautiful costumes. Yeah. I think it's interesting how the dowager is is often wearing her wealth. Yeah, you oh. know, she she has the jewels on a lot of the sure. times. And uh, and I was just noticing it particularly in today in this week's episode that um, you know she's still wearing the kind of morning outfit. She you know you wear uh, black right. from that point on because yeah, she's, she's a widow. A dowager. And but you know still has the jewel crusted mm -hmm. things here and, and yeah. there and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Why don't well. you just sell some jewels? That'll save damage. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I could run the place you probably, for a while. Exactly. You've got so much that you could deal with there. But. Uh, can we talk about the dinner, the disastrous dinner? Oh, yes, of course. The disastrous dinner. Now, this is not the disastrous dinner when Larry spikes Branson's uh, uh, drink. No. Where he goes crazy. In the, but by the way, real quick about that. I love the way the father called his son out on the carpet and said, you know, what is he? Hold your tongue, sir. Or yes. Whatever he says. He Be calls silent, him. sir, this instant. Yeah. And that's his son. He says that to his son. Then he apologizes unreservedly to Branson and the whole thing. I thought that was, I loved that scene. I just loved it when he called that son out on the car. Okay. So it wasn't that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the other dinner. Which, but, but that was a really great moment. That it was. was. It was exciting to see. And yeah. I also, Sir Anthony is the one who caught it. Yeah, he's, he's the, the one who saw right. the spiking of the drink. Right. And, and didn't put and it together, till, but, but but then he was the one that made sure that, okay, wait a minute, here's what's happening. Yeah. So that was great. Good. Yeah. And, and again, Sir Anthony, what a great gentleman. That's a gentleman right there. That's right. That's a gentleman. That's right. All right, so but the, specifically, you're talking about the dinner when, okay, they... The stove's not working. The Earl doesn't have his shirts. His shirts and Matthew, Matthew doesn't, doesn't have his, his coat. Tails. Yeah, exactly. So the, they're, they're dressed like waiters got, and they're for supposed, a barbecue <laughs> or a Chicago... What is he? He, goes, he says, I feel like I'm a Chicago uh, boot... Uh, bootlegger. Bootlegger. That's what bootlegger. That's what, I don't know what that is, but it sounds dreadful or something like that comes out of Maggie Smith. Yeah. So uh, the... 
the, the fun, okay, funny clothes and no fo food should be quite an evening, yes. says, <laughs> says uh, Martha. Martha yeah. So she ends up saving the day. Yeah, she's the right, one that comes up with the they're idea. They're coming in, they're having this very, very lavish well, this is dinner, the dinner for the ladies and, and earls of, of well, the town. No, but this is actually the dinner that they're trying to use to convince Martha to invest in, in Downton. So it was this whole thing that Mary and, uh, and, 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 uh, and the, the dowager, dowager put together, and of course it falls to pieces right in front of them, but who saves the day? Mrs. is the very Levinson. person that they're trying to impress. We're going to have an indoor picnic. Yeah. Very resourceful, something that they would never have thought of. No. They were In fact, ready to, they, you were ready to kick everybody out. They were ready say, to cancel. Yeah, you get, you tell them all to go home. But no, she says, you know, get everything out of the lottery. Is anything that's, you know, edible? Mm -hmm. And we'll have a picnic and we can sit everywhere. Do you see the look on Carson's face? And they said, what? They're going to sit anywhere they want? Can I tell you how many times my mother has done exactly that? What's People show up at the front door. They're hungry. Yep. Next thing you know, it's 6 p.m. And she's like, holy cow, what am I going to do? Goes and, and opens just... the fridge and starts cutting things into smaller pieces. <laughs> It's exactly what Very you do. Very resourceful mother. That's well, she's right. She's a fabulous cook, too. So. That's true. She right. is indeed. Yeah. And so that's what happens. And they're all excited about it. The, 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 the lords and ladies who show up are, you know, when they find out they're going to do a picnic, an indoor picnic, it's at anywhere. It sounds exciting. They sound, it sounds youthful and exuberant. And, you know, okay. So that, what they thought was a disaster, she takes away out of that. Uh, it takes away from the teeth of disaster. Well, and then we have the singing moment where, right. and, where and, she and begins. What's the story you just heard about this? Um, I read that the idea of doing a song was Shirley MacLaine's idea. So she pitched it to Julian Fellows. He loved the idea and brought That's it in. Right. And it really added an extra layer yeah. of, again, that difference between and the two the, places. Yeah, the, instead the of the, the staunchiness yeah. of sitting, uh, the, here's the free-for-all of everybody sitting in her, and then a song to boot. What frivolity. Oh, and my God. And to whom does she sing it? Let me call you sweetheart. She sings it to Violet, to yes, the dowager. Who, when she first encounters her, is sleeping. asleep. <laughs> Grabs her hand and kisses her hand yeah. at the very end. Yeah. I mean, it just. And again, she's like, dowager's Oh, for God's out. sake, what yeah. am I going to do with that? Oh, my God, I love that. Yeah. But, uh, Shirley's way of getting a song in. <laughs> Good work. No, no, it was nice. It was nice. Good work. Uh, but it's all to nod because Shirley has, I mean, Martha Levinson has decided there's nothing she can do she can't save downton she can give um she can give cora a larger dress La allowance. yes a larger uh, clothing allowance and they can stay with her at any point but the money is tied up so much that there's nothing she can do. she can't touch the principal just because well because her, her husband, husband tied her, it up so well yeah exactly so unfortunately it's left to it, well i guess it's left open right because we, we, we never uh, answered that question in this episode no anyway. So no. we still don't know how Downton's going to be saved. It's up to no. Matthew, maybe, possibly. We're, we, we yeah, don't know. We're, we're really hoping that Matthew's yeah. going to be able to save right. it. Something, or they'll find uh, a new revenue source like tin or coal or whatever it is that Dowager are considering. So that's a big, huge thing for we're going to have to find out. But uh, the other thing that well, we, you know, we, we, we're we running close. We are that, running we got to go downstairs. But before we do, before I almost forgot. <laughs> we have to talk about poor, poor the Edith. The poor, forgotten stepchild. The, the middle child. The sad middle child. I am one of them. I yeah. am the middle of three and, and i can edith. so relate to poor poor edith yeah. always being overlooked yes. always being cast aside not as pretty as the other no, sisters no. sad sad edith yes. but she's taken with sir anthony and he's yes. obviously taken with her you know yes. and we saw this in the episode not episode but season one and so they, that, that thing's been reignited i thought the most interesting thing was so you know she's you know, wants to see him. He, you know, and he's very reluctant because he knows he's old, too old and he's crippled and, you know, it's not right for her. And he knows that. But, you know, you know what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> I meant to say, what the heck? <laughs> wow. Pardon me. I hope we can beat that. Uh, all right. Too late. So, yeah. It's live. Yeah. Talk about breaking out of the tradition. Um, so uh, she, of course, is so taken with him that she doesn't care. And the thing that was so interesting is that in the, uh, when they're sitting on the bench and she's saying, look, there, there are no young men my age. I thought that was a brilliant argument. Mm. Be and it was very sweet having Grandma Martha holding her yeah. while the Earl comes up. And she says, you know, here's a man who has all of the things that, that you want. And right. the fact that he's a little bit too old is ridiculous. How am I supposed to find a man my age? There aren't any. And, and that one, well, it wasn't just the war, but the flu and the whole day. Uh, uh, you know, Would you like me to gar start dating the chauffeur? I mean, that was the only other thing I would have yeah. said if I were Edith. Which would, <laughs> well, would have been a low blow, and that would have been nasty, and so that's why I'm not Edith. So, but you know, I mean, I, you got to. Sir Anthony's great, though. What a yes, great character! I love fantastic. the way that guy. Oh. Well, and, but you he know, is far too old. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go a little forward into the coming ups. We have Edith yeah. saying, 
something good in this house is finally happening, happening to me. me. Well, in this in this in this episode, she says, you know, I can get it together in two months. So right, the, so they're so gonna get I'll, married. That's yeah, what they're gonna this get sounds married. like. Yeah, it's very so, exciting. Yeah, uh, let's go downstairs now. All right, we gotta we? go downstairs because we have to talk about Thomas O'Brien and Alfred. Yeah, so Thomas so and O'Brien are on the outs. Thomas O'Brien used to be thick as thieves, now, literally. Yeah, now there's no honor amongst thieves because they're on the outs. That's right. And all they wanted, you know, they're you know they're conniving against each other now, which is kind of fun to watch because before it was like we're going. Why are they so mean to everybody? Right. And, you know, now they're mean to each other. all through season two, it was, for God's sake, is that O'Brien lurking over there again? <laughs> I mean, she'd be lurking. She was lurking through all of season two. Yeah. And now she's still lurking, but in a different way. Right. And since we all hate Thomas so much, it's kind of exciting to yeah. see O'Brien plotting and, against and, Thomas. And now Thomas, you know, you're kind of, I'm starting to feel for the guy. I'm going, geez, you know, because if nobody wants. And by the way, I find it interesting that nobody calls Miss O'Brien anything but Miss O'Brien. We don't then even know. We don't her know. First name. Like we know Anna's first I name. No we know Daisy's. You know, I don't know Miss Patton or Miss Hughes. But uh, it's Sarah. It's Sarah O'Brien. Okay. Well, there Gosh, you go. John, but that, I can't I've, ne I've never heard that. anybody say it's always Miss O'Brien. You know. So. Well, Anna's a lady's maid. So. Yeah, I know. That's I'm just. A, that's a more I'm, casual I'm, situation. It might be that. I'm sure it has something to do with that. I just find it. You know. I'm sure we can I, find I, the Robert's Rules of Order for downstairs or something. It's because everybody's afraid of her. Yeah. They don't want her on their bad side. She's terrifying. They want. Yeah, so that's r that's a really interesting dynamic that's coming out, and yeah. and I, I've been told there's some real real intrigue that's going to come with uh, with that storyline in a bit. Mrs. Hughes being ill. Oh yeah, that's Mrs. Patmore you know, which, no, being her ally. Is, you know, because I'm going wow, the the way that that discussion. I mean, it's it was interesting because how many times have we seen a storyline when somebody gets cancer or something like that, or or and especially I'm talking in a in a, in a, uh, a show that's happening currently, modern times, so to speak. Right. And the way they handled that was interesting, just because. So much was not said, but you obviously knew what it was about because you you experienced those stories before. But the way they handled it, and the, you know, uh, I I just thought it was interesting in that this is how they dealt with cancer in this era, right? You know, and I, I just thought that was kind of fascinating. Well, it? also interesting, Mrs. Patmore was the one who was sick, you know, early on in the in the series. She ha she was blind. She was te temporarily blind. Remember, she had no, the yeah, 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 yeah. oh, that's way back okay. season one. Yeah, so yeah. she Forgot she it. went. She had eye surgery. Um, and so she was infirmed for a while, and now oh, and see. now she's you know nursing, nursing so to yeah. speak, or, or shepherding yeah. uh, Mrs. Hughes through this whole situation. Right. And it's you know it's sad because we're very sentimental about Mrs. Yeah. Hughes. She's such a, a, a you know she stands for the right. She's and a, she's, yeah, she's great. She's so pragmatic too. But yeah, I, and I love her. And she was, Jane and, love, she, she, she was Lady, Lady Jane. She was Lady Jane and Love Joy. Love Joy. Yeah, Absolutely. which I love that show. Uh, but I like to say you know uh, I'll die, he'll die, we'll all die. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> at some point, so we just have to put it in perspective. It was a nice little moment at the end there with her and Pat Moore. Yeah, it was Mrs. very Pat sweet. Moore. It was yeah, very it was sweet. Nice. I love Mrs. Hughes. I do, she's too. She's great. I do, too. She's one of my favorites. She's fantastic. So. And now, we Free got, Bates. Right, so we got to talk about okay, Bates so and we have Anna. only like two or three minutes left. We got yeah. Free Bates. Yeah, so who was it that, uh, you know, what you... Oh, I got, I got a new follower today. Um, Mr. Bates' legal team followed me. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a huge thing for Free Bates, uh, you know, because everybody doesn't want him in prison. He's wrongfully convicted, uh, the death of his wife. So uh, there's a huge, huge swell of uh, underground support and, you know, Twitter verses and you know, yes. online free baits <laughs> free baits free baits free yeah. baits so you got somebody you you tweeted it out and somebody called this yeah, yeah I, I did a couple yeah. of dabby tweets one of them was uh oh i thought you were a waiter <laughs> <laughs> One of my yeah. tweets I sent right. out earlier today. So, but Bates and Anna, so Anna is, you know, is trying to figure out. I love how she came in and she said, you know, I need to see if she didn't use the word investigate, but right. I need to, you know, she's effectively invest investigating. She figures Vera is dead. She knows Bates didn't kill her. Right. So so it must have been suicide because nobody else came in and cooked her a cyanide cake. Yeah. And so she's determined to get her husband out of jail. Yeah. Nobody else is doing this. And so, you know, all of our hopes are really pinned on Anna right now. Yeah, and they've really done a great job. I mean, so many people that watch this love that love story. Yes. They just love the, the fact that she, there's such loyalty and there's such trust between the two. And they just, everybody yearns for them to be together. And, they, you know, of course, they keep keeping them apart as much as they can. <laughs> And and it's so the it's so beautiful you know he's such a big strong character he's yeah. been through so she's, much she's so teeny tiny wayfish and to see them together it's yeah. just you know they're 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 bringing out the best in each yeah. other it's a it's a beautiful story yeah all right well look we we, we could, we could spend talking. hours talking about this but we we are out of time 
Uh, we want to thank you for listening. We hope you'll come back and uh, you know rate and comment us and tell us what you, uh, what you think and you know give us other topics that you want to talk about. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or, let or, us or know other things we may have missed because obviously there was so much to cover and it's two hour premiere, and we I'm sure we didn't get to it all. Just, real quickly, I just yeah. want to talk about how this was this this episode was shown in two separate episodes in the UK. I'm told. Oh. So so the first hour was the fr was the premiere in the uh -huh. UK and the second hour was the first episode. first After the uh, second, yeah, episode. second episode okay. of the and season. So we got two of them. And it really felt that way to me the first hour it's a wedding we get to see the tone of what all is going to happen you know we, yeah. we get the sense of downton's in trouble and that's yeah. going to be the overriding mm -hmm. issue for this season and then epi the second hour which was episode two in the uk started really you know getting us into here's the nuts and bolts of how things are going to go right and so it was just interesting to me to see how it, here in the u.s it got put into one episode one two-hour episode yeah, i was and curious why they did that because they're getting such great ratings it's you not like they need to spread it exactly out, you know I mean? so anyway well uh but we well, can't it. wait till the next we one. We love it. We hope you'll tune in, as I said. Uh, I think that's it. We, uh, Stephen, why don't you play us out of here? We got to get hey, going. Hey, hey, hey! You can follow me on Twitter oh, yeah, at please. Tamara Berg. T A M A R A B E R G. I'm sorry. What please was that? Follow what me was that? at Tamara Berg. Also, my website is tamarascentral.com. Oh, so please look for it there. Don't look for me anywhere. You can't find me. Except uh, Home Depot. <laughs> All right. So on behalf of Tamara Berg, Stephen Lemieux, I'm John Coleman Ford saying thank you very much for listening, and we will talk to you next time. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.